and let him in. Open the door and let him in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Can everybody hear me? Anybody thumbs up in Italy, USA, France, Belgium, Norway, Taiwan, hello, all around the world. Lovely to see you all, whatever time and place and space. Actually, it's really all the same time and space. You know that, right? There's no such thing as time zones in the universe. That's all our perception. But anyway, who wants to talk about that now? It's too out there. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a grounded subject, how to get trained. And what's happening for the next millennia. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hello, Reem, Brazil here. Maria, Maria. <laughs> okay, shall we? Shall we, shall we? Huh? Okay. All right. Howdy, home, everybody. Om, om, om. So let me start off with a, a brief uh, ramble. Very brief, and then we'll get into the questions right away. Most of you read about what we're, we're talking about here, but for the people who will pick this up on YouTube or Facebook and the website and not know, let me just say that we're having now a question and answer because I recently posted what my next major uh, astrological karmic teaching cycles will be like. And it was no surprise to the old students. I've been talking about this for a long time, but I'm going to teach publicly and ramp up the teachings for about nine years. And then I'm going to stop, basically, pull back, go into hermit retreat period up until another planetary cycle, which if I live into my late 80s, I'll hit, which will cause a whole different shift. But we don't know, you know, uh, we'll see what happens about how long I live, right? This is why we're talking about this. <laughs> so uh, this next cycle of nine years, starting this year, uh, is starting this year, coming year, is very much focused on finding the people who will carry on the lineage, basically, carry on what we're doing. And people say, well, what are you doing that, that is to be passed on? It looks like you're just teaching a bunch of things that you learned from different teachers. If you haven't been around the system for a long time, it may look like that. And this is not what's happening. Actually, what's happening, to clarify this, is that we actually do have a lineage stream that's extremely specific, very clearly delineated. It just doesn't have a ethnic culture or one language or one religion which holds it. So let me start by this. We have Tantra in the form of originally Shakta Shaivism. Then it spread, spread to the Buddhists and got Vajrayana. And that went out to China first and then later in Japan and later on Tibet. And it's famous as being from Tibet now. Then you had Tantra taken on by the Jains. Jain Tantra. Then you had Tantra taken on by the Sikhs, Sikh Tantra, you know, and so on and so on. Each one of these religions, ethnic cultures and languages became a system, and that's recognizable as a system. But Mahasiddhas were produced in each one of those systems, Mahasiddhas being defined in the highest sense, in the clearest sense, by those people who hit stage 10 and who demonstrated the ability to walk through walls float on top of the Ganges, sit on bottom of the Ganges without weights holding them down for days at a time, not needing to breathe, eat. This is the highest level attainment while still embodied as an individual form. Sometimes they rainbow body, sometimes they simply disappear, sometimes they become many people at once, we can't say. Now, all these traditions I just named the Tantra have produced those kind of beings. Occasionally, some Vedic rishis went the same way. Taoist masters also went the same way from original Zheng Yi Dao. You're not getting a lot these days, but certainly we wouldn't even know, though, because they're so far out in Western China that no one knows about them. Like a lot of the bumpos in Eastern Tibet, bordering Western China, they're all over the place out there, rainbow body, and we don't know about them. But see, there the Taoists had, what, a certain language from whatever area of China they came from, a certain religious context to hold it, Zheng Yi Orthodox Taoism, uh, culture, ethnic culture, and so on. And so that's recognizable in that form. When people say, what are you preserving? I say, I'm preserving Trika Mahasiddha Yoga. This was commanded of me by Swami Satyananda and Naranja and commanded of me by His Holiness, right? The 33rd Menri Treason of the Bon Mai Master. This is not something that 
although it, you know it perfectly aligns with what I see as spirituality, the core spirituality. I have to tell you, though it aligns with my own personal view, which is why they probably picked me to do it or whatever. I don't, you know, um, didn't want to do this. Basically, I really was happy just to practice and teach a little bit to friends and family, and you know, go out on a rainbow. As most of you know, that was not my fate. And uh, my teachers demanded that I share because I was being a little bit selfish, maybe a lot selfish. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what happened. So we do have something to give. We do have something to preserve. And then someone said to me recently, we may have been used to Hajj, I don't know, is it a sect? So I don't like the idea of sect because, I mean, it's fine. It's not that I'm anti-sect, like I'm against Vajrayana, I'm against Bun, I'm against Taoism. No, that's not it. I'm pan-sectarian, supra-trans-sectarian. And it's fine however you get here, but at the core of all these different sects, S-E-C-T-S -E in English, these groups that are ethnocentrically language-religious oriented and focused, at the core of all that is the Mahasiddha tradition. These two great masters, Satchinanda and Holiness, were clear enough in their seeing of the universe and the cycles we're in to say what I was feeling and what many, many people feel as well, which is why you're studying with me, I hope, is that there is a time now where the Tibetan idea of Rime, which means non-sectarianism, but was only applied towards tantric Buddhism of Tibet, is to be expanded. Rime should really include everything that's non-dual Dharma. And this is very important to understand. If we're going to go into the future, we have got to lose the clannishness that's around non-dual tantra. Because non-dual tantra is supposed to transcend what? Sect? Clan? Right? Misogyny? Classism? Ethnic centrality? It's supposed to transcend all those things. And so if we're really tantricas, and we're really mahasiddhas, we need to focus on this idea. And this way we can richly benefit from the training that I got from Dzogchen, training I got from Taoism, Zhengi Taoism, training I got from Tantra. And I keep those trainings as they are. As you know, I have not put them in a blender, hit the button to come out with the blended Tantric milkshake because that is a sure way to destroy it all. It's better to keep those transmissions clear as they are, hierarchically arranged in a one through 12 stage system of ignorance to enlightenment meeting each practitioner where they are along the way. Now, in the next nine years, this sect I wish to establish, if you want to call it a sect, it's the non-sect sect, right? <laughs> you know, this way of teaching, this way of being the Mahasiddhas, this is what we need to establish. And I want to call the instructors and the acharyas of the future, you know, over the next nine years. And then when I retreat, all right. Now it looks like the, who knows what will be in the future. But right now, it looks like I would spend most of my time going between Maine and, and Italy, northern Italy, and possibly Thailand, the old Thai retreat center as well, to do personal retreats, to write, to go off with, you know, three or five uh, heart students and really teach them very deeply, one to one, small group, mandala, this kind of idea, so that it can carry on. I need to focus on my work. Everybody who's a sadhak should focus on their work. Uh, sometimes teachers like Shivananda teach until their last breath. This is a beautiful service to the universe. I'm not saying that's not laudable. It's highly laudable. It's beautiful. But I wish to establish more of the Mahasiddha way where we don't really have massive public teachings every single day until our last breath, where we actually want to try to get to the highest stage possible in our own evolution so that we benefit the students with that kind of imprint into the system when we leave the planet. And there's that kind of vibration left in this Nara Loka, this human realm coming down through us, you know, to the students. And that's kind of important. And it's also important because it'll bring people to their highest potentials. I think when a teacher stays to the last breath teaching, the students never get to their highest level of potential for themselves. It's better that they graduate as acharyas or lower down as instructors, and then they're able to come back to the teacher every year for a training for a week or a month, and we're all together. You come where I am in the woods, and the people who are acharyas or instructors, 
will come and maybe it's in Europe and maybe it's in Maine, maybe it's in Thailand, but we'll all be together and be able to really go into it deeper again, practice together again, dip into that well once one more time answer questions, the heart students as well. Yeah, the heart, not just teachers and, and acharyas, but heart students as well. Okay, so that'll happen for nine years. I'll have public outreach. We're going to increase online teachings, increase the in-person teachings. And we're looking for support from the student body to, you know, find those karmic connections the way Machanda, Machanda threw out this fisherman's net, right? The net of illusion. And he would grab his students. It was all great Mahasiddhas did. They'd come into town for a while, teach for a few years, grab a bunch of students and run away. This is what we're doing. And then after those nine years, more retreat hermitage, just working with the heart students and the teacher people and being together that way and let the students take over and let me guide them, you know, distant and close for the rest of the time, you know, universe willing that I'm on the planet. Okay. So with that being said, now let's open up to specific questions. And hopefully I won't make it too long of a session for you, but uh, make them personal if possible. We want to know what your involvement, what your question is about your involvement. Everybody can benefit from it. So you can raise your hand, I guess, recognize you and then unmike. We have enough people to fit on one page or no, no, we got two pages. Okay. So maybe such ducking, you can see if there's hands up or anything. Okay, and you just, this one from Ben. I wanted to ask how long distance sadhana and eventual training could look like or progress. Well, long distance sadhana. Okay, so here's the point. This is a very good point. What I'm urging here is that you have nine years to get in person with me. I want to be in person with you. This is what I'm pushing for. Long distance is great, and I'm glad the internet's made a lot of stuff available. But I can see now from Namkai Norbu's experiment, this is my personal opinion of Namkai Norbu, one of my great teachers. I credit him with helping me tremendously. So don't get this as a put down whatsoever. He was experimenting. He wanted to see if worldwide transmission would work and he would hold Dzogchen transmissions of nature of mind online. Did we see a whole bunch of enlightened people come out of it? Not that I know of from his group. Maybe some of you know of some, I haven't seen it. So I don't think it was successful in that sense. I think it was successful in making the teachings more available, but I don't think it's successful in that sense. I think you have to be there. There's something about time space collapsing and being there in the present moment until we all go through the singularity and we're all absorbed into AI and no problem when your consciousness is in AI, then there'll be no time space boundary. That's one good thing about it. But for now, I think we got to be there in person. Will the online teachings increase over the next nine years? Yes, they will. The online teachings, opportunities, we're doing it already for next year. We have six or eight, five or six already scheduled for next year. And that's more than we've done before. And I look at that increasing uh, every year if I can find the financial basis to, to do that. Because the online trainings, to be quite um, clear with you guys, don't make a lot of money. I'm not like Lama Glenn out there pulling 4,000 people for an online training where he only has to charge 80 bucks because 4,000 people get some yeah, a hell of a lot of money to buy a new house every time he runs one. So that's not what we have going on. We have a smaller crowd and that's fine with me. This is all our fate, but you know, that's not going to float to boat, but we're going to try to increase them as long as I have some basis um, to help with that. Okay. So online trainings will increase, but I want to make people really clear that online trainings will never go past usually level two in any of the five ways. Some of the five ways of practice have seven levels. Some have, most have five levels, right? Um, so you never, well, the way my lovely better half likes to organize it, they have three. In my mind, they have five because the three breaks down into usually three more. So um, that's kind of how that works. And so, yeah, people are like, well, are you going to cut off the ability for us to go to the highest level of teachings? No, actually, I'm trying to make it more accessible. The opposite is true. I want you to get to the highest level of teachings, but you're not going to just buy it online. That's ridiculous. You have to demonstrate a worthiness. Like Jesus said, you don't throw pearls to swine. Now I'm not going to equate any of the students with swine pigs. That's kind of a rough one from the wrathful Jesus, but uh, you know, it means we have to be prepared. So we've got to do the work. We've got to do the training and you got to be around long enough. 
testimonies of how much you're devoted to the system, how much you love us, whatever, after you've known us for a day, it, it doesn't mean anything. You've got to understand that. That's just got to be clear. I'm happy you found your path. I'm happy you found your way. And I'm ecstatic that you're ecstatic. But I'm Asian or I'm old European, whatever you want to say, it, old world in general. And, you know, trust is love, mo no money down, just like the famous man said who wrote the most amazing songs, Lou Reed, right? Love is trust, no money down. Trust is built over time. I've seen students fluctuate in their loyalties, fluctuate in their interest, drop out three to five years. Oh, I had to get my life together. I'm back. Yeah, well, you know, that's fine. But work through the system again. Get close. Get close in, right? So it has to happen by being close, by being in person. After level one or level two, depending on which one of the five ways. And of course, there are many advanced teachings. Like in the past few years, some students give an example, have come around, who've been around for a while, 20, 15, 20 years. And they're going, I never even heard of this teaching. And I said, yeah, well, it doesn't mean I didn't know it or couldn't teach it. Just nobody was ready, you know? So there's teachings like we just taught Mahakumbhaka. I've been teaching Kundalini Hatha Yoga for, God, long time, you know? Officially, Swamiji said to start teaching it in, what was the, when was that? 88 or 89. And officially, he wanted me to start initiating people back then. That's a long time to be teaching it. And I never taught the third level, Mahakumbhaka, till this year, till last year, a one-year training with a 100-day retreat, you know? And everybody, hopefully, from that retreat, I see a lot of you online right now, are still plowing into it because the benefit keeps coming. It doesn't, oh, I did my one year. That's great. You should definitely put a feather in your cap, but you know you got to go three to five more years to turn into a day. In you. So, you know, there's a bit more work to do, right? until your perceptions and your energy body become the deity's body. But this could only happen in person. There's no way I could do that kind of a training online. It would be impossible. Impossible. Everybody who is here knows that. It's only through the interaction. It's only being in a transmission environment. It's only being with that kind of dedication, you, your own dedication, that your own refuge and surrender is purified. Your motive gets purified for the benefit of all beings to realize your nature. And then the magic happens. You know, this is it. So, okay. There will be more online question, uh, trainings for sure. So thanks for asking, Ben. Is that Ben from Thailand, my buddy? Um, Bhadra, Bhadra, Nicholas, we got that? So Mana Mani, he has two questions. Wait, where's Bhadra, Bhadra? Oh, okay. So go to him, then go to Anuloma. Okay. Where's Vajra? Oh, yeah, Vajra, on mic. Hi. Hello, check. Hi, Dharma. Mike, check. Oh, Vajraboda. Holland, hello. Hello. I have a question. In the nine next years, how many different cycles of all the ways will be given? So, for example, Kundalini Hatha Yoga, level one to three, will that happen every three, four, five years? Uh, well, our goal is to be based on way of fire, way of meditation, as offering those two the most. Uh, and then offering the other three ways in however the demand is for them. And we'll see how that goes, because I think they're a little more specific. Like we're running a way of water right now, which is kind of funny. Avatar way of water just came out. So um, what is the, I think we got like 20, 25 people for that training. 26 people. And this is with Sri Rami and myself. Like you can't ask for a more power packed kind of duo on this thing we used to teach forever together and finally back together batman and robin and it's going to be amazing and yet 25 people so you know this is kind of how it goes in this way but my goal and i was just discussing this with hajidakini is that i would like to touch on uh way of meditation way of fire every year maybe different locations not here in costa rica obviously we other instructors, yeah, and we want to invite the other instructors who've gone through high enough levels that I think have competency to come and teach with at the center here, wherever I am as well. And I drop in every you know afternoon for a half hour Q and A or <clears throat> something like this or something because that's a very powerful way to do it. The students who are learning how to teach are teaching it here at our center, and it's really their their training. But I'm covering it for them because there's things that maybe just still they don't know or they're not really confident about or i can just help with and so on 
So way of fire, way of meditation, we want to do levels of training in that each year. Way of water and um, way of warrior, I'd love to do at least one each year for the next few years. And if plans go well and some businesses that I'm getting involved with go well, and I'm able to support myself with these side businesses that won't need my attention, having been a silent investor in certain businesses, if this goes well, it's a big if, right? If this goes well, or some of the wealthy patrons in the school, you know who you are, could basically float this thing and make it happen all by yourselves, but no pressure. But I'm saying this is, if this happens, then I can teach. Then I can put stuff on the schedule. And I don't care if five people come, three people come, way of water, way of warrior, way of mirror consorts. And speaking to that, way of mirror consorts is never going to have massive amounts of people coming until, for the higher levels, until two, three, four years from now, because people are just finding out that that whole path exists. People are just getting their prerequisites done of uh, Enneagram of personality, Enneagram of relating, Enneagram of process, six realms, six realms yoga, then the basic mirror consort teachings, not to mention prelims and foundation, you know, underneath it all. So it's going to take a little while until it rolls, until the students that are in their 20s settle down with a partner for real, that the partner can be trusted and you know each other well enough and there's a good background of meditation together. You know what I mean? Okay, so yes, in short now, yes, in summary, my goal is to touch each one of the five ways each year. One of them might not make it, but most likely way of fire, way of meditation will definitely be the ones we'll cover every year. And the other ones, maybe one might not get in. But we have to remember the auxiliary supportive cycles of teachings that have to happen as well. Uh, sleep yoga, dream yoga, death yoga, and so on and so on, many of those. And the one-off topics that are very powerful in Tantra that I'd still like to cover. Not to mention, I'd still like to do the you know global healing training for the people that want to take healing as their kind of overall lifestyle and still practice Tantra. So that one, I'm looking to start, if it's going to happen next year, we have to coalesce, just wait for the fate to come together of the people that are interested in that path, the people that will help organize it, you know, and if that happens, it happens, and I'll uh, have another venue for people to meet up and, and pursue, which is not one of the classic, well, it is one of the original ways, right? The way of Siddha medicine is actually a way of cultivation. But uh, since I didn't see myself teaching it for a long time, I dropped it out and kept focused on the five ways that we present now. But anyway, that could be a possibility. We'll see if energy keeps moving in the direction of making it happen. And I'm happy to present that too. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for that question. And uh, what's the town in France? Is that it? What's the town in France or is in Italy? Well, let's see. I see Guglia Herdayamani somewhere on here. Where is she? And I don't know what town it is, but it's in the Alps. It's kind of near what? Germany? Yeah, near Germany. She can, she'll, uh, I think, Guyatai, if you could just write in the name of the town, the village nearby. It's kind of very rural, big mountains. There's a little village nearby. It's pretty uh, Heidi esque, perfect, idyllic looking place. Like, you know, I feel like I could walk out there and the hills are alive. So um, that's where that's going to happen. Where's your other question, Anna? In, or in Italy. Okay, so let me explain the Italian presence. The Italian presence is uh, something that could take a few different forms. At the very least, it's going to take the presence of one of my residences. I, I wish to make it one of my main residences. It has been a dream my whole life. And as most of you know, I grew up ethnically Italian, uh, though my mother uh, and and biological father had very little if any Italian blood but I was married and my mother married into the Italian mob when I was young I grew up Italian so I really resonate with Italy and really love to be there one day and when I go there I love it so and we love Europe in general so long term we'd like to establish something up in the mountains because I found my sadhana up there was just rock and roll just so good so and I've got some nice lines going through there astro cartography that always helps so the idea is that I'll have a residence there and I'd like to make a, I'd like to build on that acre or two or however many acres we buy. I'd like to build a, what could you say? Training hall, small training hall, maybe, you know, 10 meter by 10 meter with the pot belly stoves inside for the cold winters and whatnot. And the heart students and the acharyas, instructors, et cetera, I will invite them. It'll be like invitation only come to do some training. 
and uh, maybe they have to build a hut down the road. Maybe they have to pop a tent. I don't know. We'll figure all that out later. But this is most likely what will happen as the main way right now that we'll foresee pursuing for, for Italy, for lovely Idalia. But later, um, who knows? There are some Italian students. They're doing well in their training. They may wish to present teachings, have their own centers in different cities in Italy. So we'll see. That can be. Okay, Anna, thanks for asking. Now is it Anna Loma? Oh, no. That's different. That's a he is logistical. You said that. Money, money. Hello, money, money. How you doing? I saw him. Where is he? There he is. I'm good. Hi. You got your swimming cap on to just get out of your ultra marathon? <laughs> no, we actually have a cold snap here in Los Angeles. So like, keep my, <laughs> we don't turn the heater on around here. So I know you're a triathlete. So it looks like you just got out with your goggles <laughs> on and everything. All right. Yeah. I, uh, rock on, man. You're doing great for your age, killing it. I oh, have boy. two questions. I have, I'm going to read your question here. What will the cooler body of Acharya trainees look like and operate functionally as a community? Okay, Acharya trainees. So the Acharya trainees, uh, it's a it's a great thing to aspire towards. And I, I might even suggest it for some people who didn't really think that way, like I wasn't thinking that way when I first started. And then my gurus made me do it. But I would just suggest I won't make anybody do anything. I'm not that kind of teacher. Uh, I would suggest it. And what would the Acharya trainee group look like? How would it operate? Well, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. They have to become tight. They have to become very tight. It's going to be based on the ancient Dakini Mandala, the Tantric Dakini Mandala or Dhaka Mandala, either way. You know, in the ancient days, if the guru was, let's say, Kayoravati, a female, she would have Dakas around her that were very close, constellating around her. And this would happen karmically. It's not like she was a pervert picking only young boys that she could stoop or something, all this kind of stuff that academic writers write about Tantra is total BS. She was powerful. She was realized and she knew what was what. And she had the fate with them because there's this, you could call it a heterosexual dynamic, but it's a, a Shakta Shaiva Shaiva Shakta polarity that holds that energy together, right? And then everybody from both sexes fill it, fills in the rest of the mandala. But whether it's male or female in the center is inconsequential. The way that the Acharya uh, mandala will function is that kind of tight group. So what were the operative um, principles of it? Well, it's that they, as a group, they, they create a very powerful power of invitation, of spiritual blessing power. We call blessing waves, right? Anugraha from the great masters, from the deities. Uh, Jesus, the great tantric master said what? Whenever three or more of you are present in my name, I am there. I am present. That's really powerful if you understand it, because that's really Tantra Guru Yoga stuff and mandala establishment stuff. And when he said, I will establish this church upon this rock, Peter, Petros, you know, this is also lineage mandala establishment. This is what we're doing. So when Acharyas sign on to becoming Acharyas and their Acharyas in training, as you've said, they have to be ready to commit to being together in physical presence a certain amount of months per year. And we're leaning on a minimum of six months for the first maybe four to five years, and then kind of sealing it with really being together intensively for the last one or two years. That means I've got to be able to be ready to be in Maine with me if I'm in Maine or be in Italy with me if I'm in Italy or, you know, it's not an easy thing. And a lot of people are saying, oh, it's so hard. I want to do this, but it's so hard. And I have to say, look at your fate and look at your grit. Do you know grit, the English word grit? Look at your fate and look at your colones, basically. You know, I had to do a lot of stuff to make it happen with my teachers. I had to put up with a lot of BS. I had to travel to a lot of countries. I had to put up with a lot of hardships. I had the mafia hold me at knife point and gunpoint in my hotel room in rural India to go to see my guru, you know, like it wasn't easy guys. It was freaking hard. I had to leave my businesses, go and be there two, three months, come back, start from scratch every time. And I gave all my wealth, all my mind, all my body, just like we say in the der dedication of merit prayer. So we you have to establish that mandala body, that acharya body, acharya is in training. And you know, if it's not happening, if someone's lagging, I'm just going to have to say, I'm sorry, but this isn't your time. 
maybe later, maybe at the end of the nine years, you come back and try again. Maybe after I'm done, one of the other Acharyas takes you under their wing and develops you into an Acharya, because that's what Acharyas are supposed to do, make more Acharyas and hard students, right? And to serve the public. So this is how it's supposed to look, money, money. So uh, the obligation spectrum is to be present for as many teachings as possible. Because the Acharyas have to learn how to teach. The way to learn how to teach is to be at the teachings and then to be sitting next to the teacher while the teachings are going on and handling logistics and listening to the questions. I used to call it guru training. So, so especially I had this close with Swami Naranjan and holiness. Swamiji was kind of beyond training one-on-one -on -one and dealing with a lot of kind of stuff. I was with him a lot, but you know, I was there bodyguarding him and I was doing my Kriya yoga, hooking my guru yoga to his guru guru ness that's what i was focused was focused on completely while i was there and then as you know i had a quite psychic relationship with him as well as physical so that kind of transmission stuff is what he was all about then rather than saying you know learn xyz slowly from me over many years that was just basic work which was done already by the time i was close with him <clears throat> so we want to have that closer kind of the contact so when i was with holiness and naranjan I would be with them while they were giving teachings. And then at night I would be with them or off time, but usually at night while they um, downloaded to me and debriefed me on what would happen that day, while they asked me, what did you think of this question that that person asked? How would you have answered it? Why do you think I gave this answer? You know, and how they did or did not divulge all the information because it was appropriate or not appropriate at that time to give a full answer. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is what we call, I called guru training. I didn't really understand what was going on at the time, but later on, it, it was clear that they were training me to learn how to teach and give answers and what's appropriate and so on. For that to happen, obviously, acharyas and training need to be in the mandala and together. So together creates a really powerful energy. When you have those people that are totally dedicated to the tradition, totally dedicated to receiving the transmission, carrying it on, where they're going to suffer whatever it takes to suffer like I did to do this thing. Like, I don't care what it, what it costs physically, financially, energetically. I didn't care. When you have that pure, pure motive at the highest level and intensity, those people around the head Mukhyacharya, the Mukhyacharya is the head of a tantric sect, you know, you could say, or, or a group or a mandala. When that's gathered, it's a very powerful environment that's created spiritually. And that's, you know, best illustrated by the Vajradakini mandala, the Guru Vajradakini mandala, the direct realization mandala of the Dakinis around the Guru or the Dakas around the female Guru. And that's the old stories. You can read all about that. So that's the energy we're trying to develop. That's the ethos we're trying to develop. That's the commitment level we're trying to develop in those Acharyas in training. Certainly it's new news. I just announced it, although I had been saying this for many years, actually two decades now, I've been saying this outright or hinting all the time. You know, you're, you're nodding. You know what I mean? I'm 60, man. I can't do this till I'm 85. And no way I got to do my own practice, go really deep and guide those who are taking it really deep. Just like I'm doing with Kung Fu now, I'm, I'm guiding Rohan and those people are showing up to go really deep into the martial arts, teach them the esoteric aspects of it, the small group, you know? Same thing. So this is how it will look uh, and how it will function. And as the Acharyas in training are getting higher and higher in their training, they're going to take on more and more of the teaching roles. That's how I'd see it ideally, basically. It may not work this way because who knows? Fate, fate's crazy, right? How do you how do you make God laugh? Make a plan, right? And God laughs, does whatever he wants. So, you know, I hope this works this way. Let's say I feel like I'm intuiting it. My master astrologers have told me this. The rune pulls, the oracles, the Joey, everything is pointing this way. Okay, cool. So as I'm fading out, they're fading in. And at the last moment, when it really feels that anybody has really hit that senior full Acharya level, I give them full lineage transmission, full lineage empowerment, and it's up to them if they sink or swim, and they become full representative TMY. While, you're, while we're on this topic, I don't want to establish a bunch of people who know a lot of Tantra and then go out and spin off and do their own thing. Why? Because it won't last. It won't last. My teachers gave me a, a command, and now I'm giving you guys the command, the same down the line. This is a new era. This is a new way of doing it. Old stuff, new presentation. 
old stuff, expanding beyond any sectarianism without losing any of the power of the tradition whatsoever. In fact, I believe upholding the principles more than anything has ever done because we're not going to be xenophobic. We're not going to say you're black, you're Asian, you're white, you're Native American, you're Polynesian, you can't study with us. Because I had to deal with that. That happened to me many times from tantricas. Oh, you're, you're a Shaivite. I can't teach you. That's, that's disheveled stuff. I'm a Tibetan Buddhist, right? Or, oh, I can't teach you. You're a Buddhist. I'm a Shaivist. You know, this is unacceptable in Tantra and Mahasiddha Yoga. So we are going to give lineage transmission at some point, very powerful, full, but you're going to teach within this great thing that we're carrying forward and you're going to develop it more. That means let's say I train somebody who already had training with some very extant and powerful tantric group. Maybe they know Vajrayogini practice. Does that mean when they come in, they can no longer teach Vajrayogini practice because I don't teach Vajrayogini practice? Absolutely not. Or they teach Chud, which I don't emphasize, although it's a big part of Bun and Vajrayana. Absolutely not. If they have some mastery in some other practices that come from these Mahasiddha traditions, and they have received the authorization to teach it. This is important. And they're on their best behavior to, to keep clear and honest about that. And I hope, here's another function of the Acharya Mandala, Mano Money. You're going to keep each other honest. You're going to keep each other honest. You're going to go, when did Guruji give you, show me your book. You know, every you, you guys all keep books on the transmissions I give you and I sign. Let me see your book when he gave you this transmission. Where does it say you can do this? In spiritual tradition, this is more important than anything. I mean, even in my catch wrestling lineage, which is a lineage, I have a book and it says in there, I can coach. If that's not in there, then I wasn't given permission to coach by the great master, you know, of catch wrestling. And I would consider it that I'm doing it on my own, but this is not how we're going to run it. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of how it's going to function. Yep. So the outreach of the Acharyas in training is to serve the mandala first by training as hard as I can, as dedicated as I can, being around the teacher as much as possible, using your resources and your wiliness and skills and smarts to figure out how to live near the teacher. And if everybody's smart, if there's a lot of people that aren't making a lot of money, you either do a group business to finance it, or you do group purchasing of land so you can make group building of house. You know, it's commune time. I've, I've taught the students this for 30 years. I've had students for What's 1988? How long is that? Is that 30 years yet? 35 years. For 35 years, I have taught the students how to live in group houses. Whether, whether you were in California or you were in Australia or you were in Thailand or you were here, group houses have happened. And I told them, make group businesses, live in group houses. It's ridiculous to pay all these expenses. You're just going to leave this terra firma one day. Who cares? You can't take it with you. Share your expenses. Train hard. Use that mandala. It's powerful. Like we're all such prima donnas and rugged individuals. We want to do it all on our own. It's a little silly. So, but if you, hey, whatever, more power to you. If you're smart enough and you have the skills to scrape together a whole bunch of money and you can do your own thing and live by yourself near the teacher, so be it. You do that too. Whatever you have to do. Group home, single home. But you got to get around there to create that mandala. And this is how we serve. We're here to serve. This is a short time on this planet. Then we go to other dimensions. Or maybe we come back here. Or maybe we hit stage 10 and we can do both. But we're here to serve. And until that idea of we're here to serve is in you, don't even bother applying for Acharya. Just think, you know, I want to do one of the five ways. And maybe I want to be an instructor just to help a little bit with teaching. And maybe I don't get this pure motive thing yet, doing it for other beings' benefit. I don't quite get that yet. Couldn't dedicate my life to that yet. I feel like I'm a mess still in certain ways. Fair, fair, fair being. I get it. Take time. Okay, second part. How will this school navigate the natural, global, and regional transitions? <laughs> yeah, man. Tantra has always struggled with how will we negotiate all of the global economic transitions. You know that I used to give a state of a union address every year. Yeah. So you're in sort of the ideology I'm in financial survival, right? And I always pick where I'm going next based on a lot of criteria. I picked Northern Italy, not just because I like the food. I'm allergic to 99% of it. So it's something else, right? So yeah, location, 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 but I'm also going to factor in 
the safety into that location factor, the global security, the exposure to nuclears, the uh, global ice age that is due to come back any moment. It usually occurs with a big cataclysm. And then some of us live, some of us don't, but it's good to be near the equator, you know, this kind of thing. So yeah, I'm picking like that. How are we going to transition by being ready to pick up and run at any moment? To be quite honest, this is the power of our tradition. I don't need the textbooks. You who know me well know that I don't need textbooks. I can sit down and teach you every day something new for 10 years. And that's important. And it's important we all develop our ability to hold some of that or all of it if anyone comes through with that adept aptitude. We have to be able to do this. Books are great. Computers are great. But all that can go in a flash. And the embodiment we have to have is in our own attainment. And then the teaching should come from that. I love teaching from Shiva Sutras, Spandakarika. I love these texts but they're all addendums and only the highest, highest level of text does not contradict other text, And the highest, highest level of text can't be used as a basic text to teach in schools anyway, because the students will be like, huh? Aren't they saying the same? Isn't every line saying the same thing? Let me give you an example. Read the Tao Te Ching. Every single chapter of the Tao Te Ching is saying the same thing. It's got different words, got a little different content, a little different theme, but it's the exact same damn message if you know what you're doing and you learned with a Jingyi Orthodox Taoist lineage master like I did, luckily, from two or three of them. They, you know, everyone says the same thing. No, they use different words. One's talking politics. One's talking religion. No, they're not. You just think they are because they're using those words. Same thing with uh, when I look at stuff like uh, all the Dzogchen texts. If you really want to understand this, go buy five different Dzogchen texts from five different masters that are uh, high level texts that were translated. You're going to be by the fifth, sixth line, you're going to be they're repeating themselves. By the 20th line, you're going to be they're still repeating themselves. By the 50th line, you're going to put it back on the shelf, never open it again, because you think, why did I waste my money? Every line says the same thing. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because they're all describing the essential state, but it won't unlock anything in you until you're in that same place to receive it. Everybody remember, what is the great Shaiva Tantra maxim about this? The aphorism says what? You must be Shiva to know Shiva. In other words, you must be essence already to recognize your essence. Well, my, that sounds like what? Gobbledygook. No, it's true. You have to have some realization of your nature. And then those texts have impact. And each year after that, they'll have more impact. I'm going over and over my old texts like that now because now I'm going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But you have to have that recognition of your nature first. You have to strive for that first. Okay. So how are we going to navigate all these transitions? Well, you know, the usual advice, if, if you're savvy enough, uh, Manamani, I know you are. If other people aren't, you can talk to Manamani and me. And this is a valid conversation. Like, how do I keep my money in different countries? If you're not from the U.S., that's easier and less dangerous. The U.S. has its fingers in every other country and really hard to hide your money these days. Will you even be able to hide money? Will we be on all digital currency within five years, which is what they're going for? The agenda is clear. It's out there. The G9, it's all out there. Everybody knows. Just read the papers. It's all out there. So we have to be savvy. I think having uh, real estate in different places, even a cheap acre here, a cheap acre there, you spend $500 in Maine, you get beautiful acres of land right next to my center where the center is going to be for $500. All of you can scrape together 500 bucks. You know you can. There you go. You got an acre next to the retreat center. The very least, you put a yurt up. You can make a yurt yourself. You can make a mud house yourself over the summer. I mean, seriously, I'm serious about this. So you've got to have mobility. You've got to have places to plop down. I recommend shared houses and things like that, sharing expenses to make things happen faster. But we have to be ready to run at a notice because look at Ukraine and Russia. I was in Ukraine right after the wall fell down. You know, the Eastern Bloc, the minimal longer the Eastern Bloc. I was there right after it fell down. And I was running around Belarus and Poland and Ukraine and doing my shaman thing for three months. And it was awesome. And I thought, this country is going to come out from that. This Ukraine is going to be something amazing. It's, it's a treasure. It's a real treasure trove in that country. And I thought it's going to be amazing. And who expected this? Who expected eight years ago, Russia to go in and pretty much take Eastern part? Odessa area, right? Whatever. And then, or Eastern, Eastern. And then who expected them to just blatantly go in again? Didn't we all think that humanity had gone to the point where we realized 
in all these thousands of years that we should try to love each other? No, they haven't realized it still yet. And I'm not sure the human realm will ever get it, to be honest. So we have to be prepared for these kind of things. And, you know, you could be invaded, you could whatever. So you got to be able to bolt and you have to have the means to get away and change continents, you know. So this is how we're prepared. In the future, I'm looking at uh, getting back to Thai center as well. So we've got something in Asia when that happens. We'd have something in Europe when that happens, something in North America, something in Central America, possibly even South America, because some people are involved with something down there that might be happening. So if, if you're in those countries and all of a sudden you couldn't get out through any airports, you're locked down, you can always run away to the woods and go to the center. I don't think big political groups that take over are going to be attacking our little retreat centers. Maybe but we don't rec like represent any real threat to anybody's power. So I think if we lay down below and it's not a religious right-wing overtake, the Russian thing is highly tied into the Orthodox church, as many of you know, which is kind of scary, right? So who knows? Okay. Did I cover that enough, Mano? Yes, very. Thank you. All right, brother. Good to see you. Vajra Vera, you have a mala back. <laughs> yes, I got this mala has survived. I don't know how it made it back from Spain and left in the woods when we did retreat. Um, who is this? Juliana. Hello. I'm wondering which town place in Maine will the center be located in? Is this Gia? Hello. Code name yes. Julianne. Yeah, I forgot your other name. Uh, and who is in charge? We have a bunch of beavers in charge right now. You also mentioned to be near Maine. I'm wondering if living in a state near Maine. Yeah, as long as you can get up on the weekends at the very least regularly. But the point is, here's the thing about it. Before I tell you where it is in Maine, when we establish these, these mandalas, wherever they are, and the students are interacting, I don't want to say kula anymore, but mandalas, it's presence that matters. It's a sustained presence and sustained practice. And everyone living that view which actually brings the mandala in, maybe a two minute review. In classical Tantra, we go through our foundational training. It's called sannyas training, learning how to be detached. Um, Buddhism and Bun call it sutra training. And then we enter into Mahayana training in Buddhist and Bun terms, which actually is still part of the sannyas training, where you're dedicating yourself to the vision of the system. That's all included in sannyas training from the Shaiva Shakti terminology. The uh, Taoists don't have this similar breakdown structure. But once you go past that, the next thing you're doing is Tantra, transformational training, having to do with deities, Kriyas. You're trying to change your perceptual field because you've developed what? Pure motive of doing it for the benefit of all beings and pure guru yoga motivation of devotion. Pure. Your, your agenda doesn't matter anymore. And you've developed number two, accumulation of merit. You're not just thinking it, talking it. You're doing it now. You're doing things for the benefit. Okay. Once that's done, you enter into transformational level where you're in the middle level, the corridor, where what? You act as a conduit to bring those celestial forces down into our plane and to lift up this plane into celestial. Meaning what? To reveal the mandala, the inherent self-perfected mandala that is already here. That's the completion of the Guru Yoga, Deity Yoga level of practice, which takes one to stage seven, eight. Now, to do that, we have to invoke that mandala and bring it in. If we're living where 16 hours a day, well, let's say 14 hours a day, we're running out to the grocery store, got to buy the whole foods, got to pay the bills, you're manic, doing your work for someone else's company, so they make a lot of money and you get enough just to survive on. And then you're doing sadhana for an hour or two a day, you're not going to create a big mandala. But as a group of people dedicated, putting time out, getting into these other situations, you're going to be able to invoke that mandala as a group because it's group power. Remember, group power is what brings it in, actually. So this is the thing, Gia, when you say living nearby, when I say living nearby, I mean living nearby, but being there a fair bit when you're not needed in your other place. So it's not for everybody that step. But it's a logical and very real step once a person enters into high stage four, stage five practice. They realize, shit, that's the only place I want to be. I can always go for the weekend down to the city and watch a movie and go have some burgers and fries at a cool place and a beer and shoot some darts. And then I go back for another 28 days of sadhana in the mandala. And then I'll go back for a weekend later. That's no problem. Pulsing is no problem. But it can't be 
it's very difficult at stages um, high four and five going into six to sustain any kind of real development while still putting all your energy into the worldly experience. It's just really difficult. Okay. Okay. So where in Maine? Well, I own land in Jackman, Maine right now. And the business I'm silent partner in is looking to expand in a very big way. If we have the help of any funders, anybody out there know funders that want to get involved in a business that is absolutely gangbuster right now. And we own all the licensing and everything. So it's just going to fly. It's already making a pretty good amount of money, but we want to turn it into something that has basically has that in the modern vernacular FU money. We don't have to worry about charging for courses anymore. We can build centers anywhere we want in the world. There's literally that kind of money possible. We're looking for where we're going to put the factory to take this to the next level for this business. So Jackman, Maine is where we'll have one residence. It might turn out to be Sajid Akhanese and I private retreat where we maybe bring one to five heart students like that sometime. But most likely we will have the center somewhere between Bangor, somewhere between Bangor and Jackman, closer to Bangor, maybe a third of the way between Bangor and Jackman, uh, a third of the way, fifth of the way. There's a lot of woods around there. Maine is pretty rural. We're going to put the center there most likely at this point. We're looking for good spots right now uh, that will have water, that will have blah, 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 and put the factory about one or two miles away so we can check on the business when we need to without it impacting the retreat center sound wise or visual wise, but still not have to drive like crazy. So this is what we're looking at right now for location in case you want to check those locations for Maine. Okay. But it could be anywhere in Maine. We'll see what happens, but that's where it's all pushing for right now and has been going that direction for three years. And now it's kind of rapidly coming to fruition. Okay. Murad. Hi. I was wondering with will that Mashakti and shamanic online trainings, be almost same like in Britain. Again, bro, I, I kind of handled that earlier. It's never going to be the same, especially when it comes to warrior training, shamanic training. You really got to be in person for that. I'm not really sure the global healing training will do anything online, to be honest. Uh, no, how, did I say it would? Yeah. What did I say? Yeah, but which ones? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe Sajidakini is telling me I'm schizophrenic and I go back and forth on it, um, which tells you how difficult it is for me to, to really want to do that because shamanic training, I mean, the very nature of it is that you're doing it with a person in the woods. You know, that's how I did it. And even with my guru is the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. If we were going to do modular approach, we could do some online as prep so that when we get together, it's deeper and then follow up Q and A's afterwards and keeping it going. That's what I would do committed to those groups. I'm not sure of the structure yet. Uh, Atma Shakti. Yeah. I think we said we were going to put the first, we're doing a cohort online. We might even put the, the practice, the teachings online, not just cohort, but Oh, the cohort is going to go through stage one. As stage one, two. Coming through, going through A to Z. Okay. All right. So I, I keep, you know, I, I defer to Sajidaki on this. She keeps it all straight. She's the vice president of curricular development or president, I should say. So yeah, it looks like, uh, yes, Atma Shakti, we will try to give that one online. I think that is a good one to do online for the reason that even though the high, high, highest levels of it dovetail into direct non realized, uh, direct non conceptual realization practice, we call the Vajra path. Uh, Vajra Marga at this point, uh, or way of the Vajra at this point, pretty much Atma Shakti levels one and two should be online probably. So yes, Murad, it looks like we're going to do that as a cohort, maybe scheduled to be a cohort. There we go. All right. Good questions. You guys are really getting it out of us. Vagni Vosges. Is that French? I wouldn't know how to say that. Okay. So that's where it is in France. Vagni Vosges. All right. I mean, I'm murdering that i'm sure sorry french speakers dorga uh how should one formally request to be part of the acharya program uh yeah so basically i would like to receive a letter from everybody who would like to be chart part of the acharya in training program we'll collect all those applications and then 
contact people and then you can see who's in your area who's also in that group and you can start to work together which is so crucial uh, what i'm never going to stand for is infighting i know it's human and people accept it in spiritual groups but i will never accept it because i don't know how anybody operates at stage high stage five especially stage seven and above and and can be infighting it's just unacceptable infighting gossip backstabbing disloyalty, talking down the system, talking down the teacher or the consort, talking down fellow acharyas and training students, you know, it's going to be like, chow, you're done. Uh, I'm not going to deal with it because I really don't like that mean spiritedness. I really, really don't like it. And I see it when you get sectarianism involved in religion involved in hierarchy and all that people get crazy and I'm not going to stand for it. So how do you request? Okay. A letter followed by a personal interview as soon as you can do it afterwards show up and ask as well uh if you want to symbolize it with bringing some flowers if you want to symbolize it like one of my students did bring in gold dust he remembered a story i told like in the old days students would have to go and collect gold dust all around india tibet nepal and then when they got a handful together they would come and place it at the teacher's feet you know it would have taken them a few years to gather it or whatever uh this was um symbolic of this is what i think you know the priceless value of the dharma gold you know but anyway it, it doesn't need that but symbolically you want to symbolize it some way but i do want a letter and i want to know why you want to be an acharya the key point to write is why please don't make it flowery fluffy blowing smoke up my skirt if, there, if there's one way to turn me off as a teacher and as a person is just keep being a lap dog just keep being a butt kisser and you will find yourself farther and farther away from the teachings. Okay. It's going to say it up front because it's just utter bullshit to me. I only deal with, you know, in America, we have this state called Missouri or Missouri, if you're from down there and they have a saying that's on their license plate. You guys know it. It means it's the show me state. I love it, man. The show me state. So don't say stuff. Show me. You got real guru yoga. Show me. Don't waffle in your intention. Don't drop out. You know, say you've got problems with the teachings, problem with the teacher's personality. Then pop back. Oh, I'm here. It's all great again. Give me all the great teachings and then pop away again in three months. And, you know, no time for that. Too old. No time. I love you the same, but doesn't mean I got to teach you. Love you the same. So, <laughs> Dorga, get a letter, get the motive there, why you want to do it, give some background on that. And then basically, then, uh, you know, why you want to do it, why you think you're suitable for it. We'll check the charts again to double check for teaching, you know, karma. And that doesn't, doesn't mean we won't take you into the Acharya in training program. If you don't have that karma, you can develop teaching karma if it's a sincere desire. Uh, but we'll just check it anyway to kind of fine tune how we need to train you and blah, blah, blah. I should say it. So that's what you do. And then follow it with an um, interview. Okay. And then, um, oh yeah, Turkish center. That's right, Turkish center as well. We'll take over the great mosque at Sofia, right? we just take it over. <laughs> That'd be a good training place for us. I like blue. So, you know, in the end, how many Acharyas are, am I looking for to graduate after nine years? Probably three to five would be uh, amazing. That would be a bumper crop if we could find three to five totally dedicated people to take it on. Does And again, you only have to, be adept at and master one of the five ways. But you have to be pretty good at meditation, way of meditation and way of fire, just because they're the backbone of everything, especially for beginners. That's what I mean. You're going to meet most of your beginners by meditation class, yoga, and they need it. But then mastery or expertise in the other ones, you will do as your interest, you know, allows and time allows. And of course, I want to see you become more as rounded as well rounded as possible. Okay, so Dorga, that's the way it would go. Did I answer it enough, Dorga? Or is there more question you have about that? Okay, just a letter. And, you know, especially if I don't know you well, make it a longer letter. But, but we need some more time. We need some more time. For people I don't know well, I just need more time. You know, nine months, a year to know you, it's not a lot. Um, even if I've known you for many years, but we haven't had much contact time, that still means that's not a lot. Do you understand what's happening? All right. And then we have Gia, I think you may have answered the second part of my question as well when answering. Okay. Wendy, hi, Wendy. I'm interested in this idea of purchasing some acres near the main center. How may I learn more about how to purchase this? Well, you talk to a realtor or anyone else interested in going in together a number of acres. Yeah, I think, you know, why don't you post something on the Facebook group or put it through the email list and say, who'd like to do a group buy 
and who'd like to do a group build, you know, maybe where's Wendy? There you are on your porch. Who'd like to do a group buy, group build? Who'd like to be involved in something like that? But just put it out like that. Like I said, we're not sure exactly where the center will be. And we're going to really firm that up. We're talking to some potential investors right now. When we get that money through from the investment, that's when we know we can go on the factory. And we're looking for land already. we got a few places sorted out, but some investors say, I have to agree with where the land is. Some investors are like, hands off here, you guys do it. You know what you're doing. So basically, we're going to wait and see which kind of investor comes through. We know where we'd want it. But I don't want to tip the hat yet because if you go and buy there and we move it 50 minutes away, because Maine, you have to drive really slow. They will give you a ticket everywhere or cops everywhere. I got pulled over twice while I was there and I was trying to go to speed limit. Like I was only 10 over and they pulled me over eight over. So, you know, you'd want to be closer rather than far away. And there you can be literally on the border with your homes because that's fine. In fact, it makes a, a barrier. It makes a big community and other people who don't have our intention can't get in there and then start doing, you know, running raves every night or doing whatever the weird stuff they do. Not that there's anything wrong with raves, but not right next to the retreat center. Okay. So I think you, you get that right, Wendy, how to proceed. Okay. Skip Hunksters. We got it. Okay. Sliding over hooks. Uh, you're welcome, Murad. Wenke. Do you know now how the, so Murad, maybe Italy is doable, right? Are you in Bulgaria? Where's Murad? He was here. Okay. Um, Wenke, do you know now how the format of the way of meditation will be? Like way of water or continuous training over? Oh, you mean for the whole year? Is that what you mean? The year that we're focusing on it, Wenke? Okay. So starting in uh, January, Rami gets here, we start way of water. We know how that's organized. The year after that, we're going to start way of meditation. And we have had discussions about it already. In, in the way of water year at the end. Wait, next year is 2023 when Rami and... Uh, same year, 2023. So that's way a water year. So we'll start it there as a pre pre a preamble going into the next year. Okay. So we're going to start with, what would you say, a cohort of meditation online? Okay. Level one cohort on way of meditation starting probably fall of next year. And it's on the schedule. And then from there on, we'll go to uh, teaching the other levels of way of meditation maybe level two online as well, but definitely in person level two and continue level three. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Saj, I wanted to run similar to a uh, way of fire where we might do modules of three months, three months, and then another three months or something like that to, to round out that whole year ending at New Year's. Something like that, three, 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 or three and six months. So you do the online cohort stuff, you know, or move here already and sit in house with us in the model in this room right here, when we do the online trainings already. But we're going to run it after the first cohort stuff online for those of you who want to go deep and do a year or a three or six or nine months or one year retreat in meditation. Then you would come and live here like the people that did way of fire one year retreat. That's right. And so for the people who came in the cohort without being here in the beginning, at the end of next year, before 2024, at the end of 2023, I would also continue meeting with that group online probably once a month so they can continue to meditate and go deeper, right? So that will continue as well. Is that clear, Wenke? And schedule will be up in the next month, let's say. But that's it's it's pretty clear if you can work through that long answer. Okay. PMRK12192. Hello. <laughs> That's a heck of a name. Can a junior Acharya trains a Sadak to become an Acharya? No. So junior Acharyas cannot train Sadaks to become Acharyas. Only a full Acharya who's received the Porna Diksha Abhishekam 
which is the full transmission of the lineage empowerment ceremony. And that's important that the whole group publicly knows this. So they are the reference points. They can train other people to be Acharyas. So Sajadakini right now is the first junior Acharya that's been consecrated. She's junior Acharya. So everybody goes through junior Acharya, then you keep training for another three, five, 10 years, whatever, whatever it happens, then senior Acharya. Full, full, we could say Pornacharya. If it ever happens, it's also an if, because it really, and you should be in your heart space okay with that by then. Yeah, I want the best benefit for all beings. If I don't really achieve or attain the level of realization of my nature that's needed for Pornacharya, as well as the information that I carry as a responsibility, um, then I shouldn't get it. You should be humble enough to know that. And that's fine. That's fine. Then you're just a, not just, you've achieved junior Acharya, you're a heart student, and you know, you're going to do magnificent things for the system from that perspective. You can teach a lot as a junior Acharya, a hell of a lot, and really benefit. So there's no loss there. We all have to be comfortable with coming to what is our natural aptitude, competency, faded level of attainment. Look, I'll be quite honest with you. There's things I wanted to achieve in my life spiritually, and teachers flat out said, no, you don't have the karma. My usual fate was any teacher I've went to, they said, we want you to be my successor. I'm not kidding. Everywhere in the mountains of Ukraine, it happened in India, everywhere, China. And I'm like, huh. But <clears throat> sometimes I went and I really wanted what they had. And they're like, no. So it doesn't, sometimes we don't have the fate. We just don't have that fate. Like example with Master Wu. Master Wu had um, hundreds, hundreds of what's called outer door disciples in, in Chinese spiritual Kung Fu where Taoist meditation is taught and so on, liberation path. So Master Wu ostensibly was a Buddhist, but when you got deeper in, you found that they were Taoist. Taoist is kind of a trick they pull. And Master Wu had a ton of students in Brooklyn and taught them for like what? When did I mean? Like four decades by the time I met him and then taught him for another three decades. I mean, the man died at 112 years old, still teaching. So, but I asked him, who are the inner students? And he said, there's three. You're one of them. And I was like, holy crap. I mean, hundreds. And here's the interesting thing. He didn't require me to do any of the outer curricula. None of it. He took me right into the inner curricula right away. Inner secret curricula. I'm like, that's interesting. So we don't know how we're going to get in, how we're, where we're going to, what way. We just have to know how we're going to serve. Right? So he made me take a vow to teach 12 people what he taught me. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to fulfill it. I'm praying. I'm praying in this cycle that the warriors come and the warriors, I can find 12 warriors who want to hold this deeper knowledge of how to circulate primal energy chi through their body in such a way that maintains their health like he did until 112 and brain capacity. And, you know, obviously there's spiritual benefit there. It's not just about physical chi power. Okay. So yes, junior acharyas cannot train anyone to become an acharya. They cannot consecrate anybody as an acharya because they are not a full acharya okay we're uh, rotterdam oh cool man oh too bad i didn't know you back then i always used to go to rotterdam maybe i'll get back there again that's weird one of my favorite uh places i almost almost wanted to live there for a while but italy is doable good also interested in the vajra deha cool awesome I know you must be. You're a very body-based practitioner. It's awesome. Body entry way to enlightenment is awesome. I hope you do my warrior training someday. By the way, our body, mind, etc. paths kind of included in Atma Shakti. Uh, if you understand that, yes. In the training online, very hard to teach the body, but way of fire makes for a great Atma Shakti practitioner. Way of the warrior, awesome Atma Shakti practitioner. But it doesn't mean if you don't do those, you can't. Right? I just want to make that clear. In other words, you can get high up Shakti realization without taking a obviously body-centered path, okay? Body, speech, mind, we can enter through any doorway. Guya, do you plan to do an approximative calendar to see the progressions? Uh, it's too hard to project like five years, three years down the track, Guya, to just show which ways will happen. Right now it is. I think three years from now, I think we'll be able to make a six-year calendar. Like three years from now, I project we'll be able to make a three-year calendar. I'll know which centers are solid. I'll know which students who are once who's there's a lot of students who say, I want to make a center. 
But like you have a center, you own a center, you already did the one year training, you're already initiated, you're already a heart student. So like, you know, you're set. We know that that's going to be a center. Other ones are still formulating and trying to get solid. It takes time. Three years from now, I think I could put together a six year uh, calendar of how I'll still be teaching and who will be consecrated by when and so on. And all that right now, it's a little bit still in formation. Hence this session. Okay. Uh, who's this? Vajravira. How you see the way of warrior, the format of it. Yeah. Well, you know, Vajravira, I'd like nothing more than to see a group of people doing parallel double training during way of meditation year. And that's why I don't care if it's small, you know, and I don't care if it's old people like us who can't do all, who can't do everything with our knees and our elbows and everything. Young or old, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm actually now proselytizing heavy for martial artists in the area here. Every day when I go to the gym in town or when I go to the gym in town, I see whoever looks kind of fit and young and looks martial. Right? Hey, do you, got, do you do any fighting? Do you want to come and train with us? Like, you know, I'm looking, so I'm already asking. My ideal would be 2024, when way of meditation hits its groove and we do like the three, six month, three month, six month module kind of approach, like we did a way of fire, that way of warrior people would want to move here. And either they do simultaneously way of meditation or they just do way of warrior so they can train and I can be with them. Because as you know, as you know, well know from training you've done in multiple martial arts, got to have that day to day contact more in a body training system than in anything. So I'd, I'd be training bodily with the students, I'd say four to five days a week. And Rohan plans to be around here for another three years before he goes to the States to make his millions. So if he continues on a trajectory and becomes more helpful with Kung Fu as he is right now and doesn't totally cheese me off by being lazy, then uh, he can help out a lot as well too because Kung Fu is getting quite good. It's too bad sometimes he's lazy, but... He's just discovered girls, so we'll see. Um, that's how I could see it happening. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, let's say that didn't happen. I think it's going to happen that way. I want it to happen that way, so it probably will. But let's say it didn't happen where I run the Way of Warrior 1 paralleling. Then I would do intensive short Way of Warrior 1s. Um, if you're a martial art teacher already, great. Come in. You'll get a lot out of it. If the person's not a martial art teacher already, doesn't matter because it's warriorship we're teaching, then they can find a local martial art teacher to train with if they can't pick up our system quickly. You know, that's how I'd see it go. And then I would offer that probably a few times a year because I would like nothing more than to train for 10 days, three times a year with a group of people coming from all around the world. But to get the start, I think 2024, a group of warriors dedicated to doing it, you know, like let's say you came down and Murad came down and Art Rohan was there and, you know, there's some people around here too. And I can't remember everybody else who's Vajradakini might be interested. Like, so I don't know. Are you Vajra now? Yeah. Like, okay. So maybe there's some people that would go that way too. Uh, that's a big enough group already. That would be just dynamite. Where's my guy? Where is he? Uh-huh. Bodhinidhi maybe. No, he's not smiling. Bodhinidhi's like, nah. Bodhinidhi's like, no way I worry for me, man boxing all the way um an astrological reading can help which way is the best fit for a sadak depending on his temperament uh that's a question can an astrological reading help which way is best for a sadak depending yeah of course we can often see some of the ways which of the ways do you have more aptitude towards in astrology but it's not definitive it's definitely not definitive okay but you can you can see some trending there that kind of thing right I have some indications from the house of Sadna in my chart towards um, wrathful the female deity practice, right? And certainly that was where I made a lot of my headway with uh, first Dorga, Kali, Chamunda in that progression, you know, so that, that worked. Bela, Rim, hello, Rim, and Eves, hi, Eves. I'm thinking about try to live close to a center in long terms. Uh -huh. Should I focus on a specific one instead of another or just pick one of them? Costa Rica, Brazil, France, Maine, and make my plans to move. You know, when it comes to it, I think you have to figure out 
where is it easy for you visa wise where is it easier for you language wise where is it easy for you finance wise all those questions that come up will it be very expensive when you need to fly back to home base wherever home base is right i never had a home base in america when i went expat in 1986 that was it i was done my family black sheeped me i black sheeped them and i was gone so my home base was wherever i laid my hat if you're like that kind of person then choose whatever you want you're free but if you have a thing where no i own 100 acres at home and i got a ranch still and i'm going to keep that someday i'll go back then figure out between the two countries what's the best thing to do. You also might want to decide which one of those areas will best suit what you want. The main center, the one up in Maine, is going to be pretty... Um, we're going to run core curricula up there. Yeah, it'll be like a main center, M-A-I-N, a, a central focused center uh, that we'll have. Um, but I'm going to try when I'm in Maine to i don't want to scare anyone but i want to give it straight in maine you know you could have your caipirinha or you could do a shot of cachaca you know what i mean baby so the maine will be like shots of cachaca you're coming up there we got 25 degrees below zero bears and wolves that will eat your ass if you're outside too long taking a pee so you know and your urine will freeze before it hits the ground. So this is the kind of environment I want for those hardcore people. When you come up there to do Mahakumbaka, we'll see if you can survive out in that snow. So when I was up there in the snow and I had COVID, I still went outside and nude and I was in the nude naked and did my Mahakumbakas. I figure if I'm going to get COVID and die, I might as well find out if my Kumbaks work. So I still went out in my little hut, you know, and did my Kumbaks and it was awesome. I want it to be like that. It's going to be full curricula, but... I think, you know, the environment there, and don't forget the main center, I don't know if you guys remember, I'm looking at a ridge, a special ridge of mountain, and there's a bunch of them in Maine, you may look for more, where it looks like natural cave formations are there. And what I'd like to do is go in and get town approval and engineering to actually cut out small caves and shear them up with, you know, shouldn't have steel, you know, in, in uh, retreat meditation structures should not have steel. If we could cut them in a way where they're this shape, so the roof won't cave in on anybody, I'll talk to the engineers, but cut them straight into the stone. Because if we get the investment that we're hoping to get, we'll be able to do these things. And I'm gonna create an American Dzogchen hermitage there. I'm already in conversation with my home monastery in India for Bon Dzogchen about it. And I wanna get caves and we'll brick it up and put a little door on it, no window, just like it is in Nepal and Tibet and Northern India. And we all get to go to do these cave retreats. So that opportunity I want to have in the United States where food supplies are a little bit easier right now and a little bit safer for being taken over by foreign countries and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Remember, China's always taking India's land every year. They take kilometers. They encroach kilometers on India. So even northern India is not so safe for this or Nepal. So don't forget that's there too. So when you go to choose, kind of know the flavor. The Costa Rican center... Uh, we might as well talk about this. It's a good time to talk about it. Our ideal plan would be somewhere within three to six on the outside seven years of the next nine years to Sajidak and I would only be coming to the Costa Rica center somewhere between uh, one to three months a year. And then I would have junior acharyas or fully trained porn acharyas already who like Costa Rica enough and who feel enough commitment to the system to help us out by living in our house and running the center and teaching from here. While I go to live more in a climate which will preserve my health. The goal is for me to get past 86 years old, 88 years old. If I can get past 86 or 88, it looks pretty damn good that I can make it to 108, which is really good for everybody. So I need cold weather to do that. Everybody who's trained with me here knows that I keep the room freezing and you go crazy and you have to wear blankets, but I love it. I need it. So uh, the more I can spend time between moving between the main center and the Italian Alps and French Alps centers, but my main residence in Italy, main residence in Maine, this will be suitable. This will be the best with occasional retreats in Thailand. If I buy the center, because 
My Rahu runs straight through that center. My Rahu line, which brings me fantastic Kundalini, cr crazy eighth house benefit. So when I go into that cycle, the mysticism that will come, the rainbows pouring out of that little bun temple, Dzogchen temple I built there oh so long ago at Holiness's specifications, I intend to put a little time in there because the sky gazing there is incredible. The Vastu is phenomenal. The Vastu Shastra is phenomenal there. Okay. So that's just a little bit about how we intend to go in the future. The reason three to six years for now is that it depends on my daughter. My son graduates high school probably next year. My daughter will, who knows, change schools into America or graduate to Costa Rican school within about six years. She's ahead on the curriculum. She might even get out in five years. Who knows? But I can't leave uh, that. I will not leave the kids. I will fulfill that obligation. Unless, you know, I die. I have no choice about that. Okay. Yeah, so Sajidakini is reinforcing that in the next three to five years, when the junior acharyas, everybody like that's getting trained more, if you're here living in our house, whoever we choose for this, if there's some dedicated people who would do this and running everything, then we are free. I am free to go and constantly circulate the French center, the Italian center, the main center, the one in Brazil that could develop, you know, the, 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 I can just constantly move around. But that also depends on everybody understanding how to host me because, you know, yeah, I'm fit, but I'm kind of old and I really do need kind of kid glove treatment these days. I, I kind of need my food to be just so because I have a lot of allergies. And the last thing you want to do with, um, I just got rid of rheumatoid arthritis, as you guys know, grace of the masters and whatever we were doing health wise, but I don't want to bring it back. And getting inflammation in the body is a sure way to bring it back. So losing sleep on overnight flights and bad hotels and crappy food and, you know, making me teach long hours that don't really suit. It has to really be kind of, I have to be kind of taken care of. And the curriculum has to be set up kind of my way or the highway for the next six years. I've got to tell you what I think the people in your area need. And I need you to go all come along with that if we're going to preserve me. And then I'm ready. Man, I will travel. I have no problem traveling. I'm peripatetic. I have a fourth house that says anywhere I lay my hat is home. I'm really comfortable with that. Lived out of hotels for a long time teaching. I set up an altar. Students come in and we have a big mandala there and we practice together and talk and whatnot and go to the teaching hall and come back, whatever. I'm, I'm okay with it. I really do well if I have what I need. A good gym, a good quiet hotel with it's comfortable enough, good access to good food, blah, 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 blah. Then we can do this thing. Then, so if we get in three to five years, this stabilized here, then I'm on the road. Well, yeah, okay. So Sajjaki is making an extra point that we are established here in Costa Rica right now. This does enable me to go out and teach at these other centers. That's why we're going to do this now. So much to so better, though, if it's kind of mandala developed here. I know a few of you on the call are actively looking for homes here. Some even want to try to buy right in our group of houses here, which is just great. We have six houses here right now. Dharma people in our group own two. If someone picks up the other one that's up for sale, that's three. That's three out of six. I don't really give the other people much time in this place after that because they're all pretty old. And the houses are going for good money now, more than a lot more than they paid. Like they doubled now. And I see a lot of them wanting to get out. If we could own all six of these, this would be the most amazing tantric ashram compound, like custom built, just amazing. And we ran, it would be so phenomenal. We have our temple next to it on the land we bought next door and built the shala. So many things are possible. This is the time of possibilities. This is the time to be very excited to be involved with this system. Uh, I don't expect a lot of people to respond. I put the Facebook thing up and uh, the announcement of the forecast. What do we get? Like 70 likes? You know, people don't care. People don't care. That's fine. You don't want to be with us long term. You want to take a little bit and dabble. That's all good. No big deal. I'm looking for the people who are long term right now. I don't have time to save the world. So <laughs> we're just going to work on our stuff. Petra. Hello, Petra. Did I cover that? Will astrology be part of the curriculum? So Vajradakini, will astrology be part of the curriculum? I'm just going to turn it over right now to the head astrology teacher. Okay, so for here's the one thing. For acharyas, definitely. For acharyas in training, astrology is a mandatory subject. There's no question. Uh, oracles, you have to get good at oracles. I'm going to give you direct training in oracles, and I'm not talking like a weekend thing. 
It's going to be like two years on oracles. And another one of the most amazing oracles is astrology. And that trade will go much longer than two years. Yeah. The Acharyas, the first goal is to get you the basics of understanding, which can take about a year. And then just enough to understand the Mahakala transmission, how we understand the spiritual reading of the chart to be able to fine tune a student into their practices, into their path. But if you want to be a full astrologer, I'm sure that opportunity may be there in the future, right? Yeah. And that opportunity is there for some of you will have aptitude for it and interest, and it will help your students a lot. So, um, but Asaja Dakini is saying, yes, she would, she will teach it. Yes. Cause she's strutting her stuff now. She is good now. And she is taking clients and they're coming out of the woodwork right now. Nothing to do with me announcing it all in her own karma. She just got booked out for months. It's crazy. So yeah, it's all happening. It just decided to happen. Boom. Astrology is very important, everybody. So strap in. <laughs> it's a hard study, but it's wonderful. So Petra, I am wondering if the locations are now set or if you'll be adding more later. Okay. Such as West Coast. <laughs> um, let's not say anything is set at this point. Let's say that everything I'm saying ranges from 95% set in cement to 5%, you know. But I think through what I was talking, I already own the land in Maine. So that's obviously a commitment. We already own the land here in Costa Rica, obviously commitment. Um, Guglia owns France, obvious commitment, you know, so these are obvious long term commitments, what happens up in Norway, what happens in West Coast of America, you know, I would prefer Mexico. Because if you're thinking California, and you want to start a center, start it in Mexico, start it in Oaxaca, start it in, you know, someplace where the cartels aren't too strong yet. They won't mess with us anyway. But start it start somewhere where the cartels aren't strong. I really think Mexico is great. If I would have had more time to research this Costa Rica move, I would have gone to Mexico. But I relied a lot on my ex-wife to, to pick this place. And the schools were right for my kid, which is what we needed. So we did what we need to do. I don't, you know, now I love it. You know, I love Costa Rica. It's tough. It's tougher than Mexico. But I would go to Mexico because you have a lot of land. It's a lot cheaper. It's easier to get to generally, especially for Americans. But as far as an American center on the West Coast, I would either do that or I would do in the woods of Washington, Washington state. And I would do it where I could load my backpack up with jerky and walk for 10 days and make it to the Canadian border. Like that's how close I'd be because you never know what goes on in America. It could turn into some crazy scarlet letter. What was the name of that show we watched with the girls in red? You know, the handmaid's tale, handmaid's tale could happen in America any moment. Cause America's crazy. So I'd want to be a little walk to the border of Canada. Like in Maine, my land is literally a walk to Canada, right? And there's no border patrol there. I just stamp with the beaver and the beaver lets me go through. So, you know, uh, that would be good to do. So if you're going to pick America for a, a potential center, make it up there. Um, of course, it's tougher for the global ice cap kind of problem, but it's good for global warming as far as rising sea levels and changing aridity, which will make desert right up through pretty much Northern California, half of Oregon by the maps that we can go by now and make that lush, lush green area of Northwestern Washington state, you'll turn it into like a temperate semi dry zone, right? We can live with that. That's my advice. So Mexico or that great. If you're thinking of making a place. Yeah. Right now it's open. Anybody want to make a place anywhere? Great. Anybody got a spare million dollars laying around? You want to buy my old Thai center? Do it. Just do it. I'll be there because I love it. I love that center. So Sajidakini is saying, do we want to have everybody work together and focus their energy on certain centers before we start building other ones? I think you've got to look at centers like satellite centers and Every satellite center is a satellite center of the main center. What's the main center? Wherever the Mukhyacharya says it is, that's the main center. Wherever their main residence is, that's usually the main center, the, the central focus center. I know for foreign language people, the state of Maine and using this word Maine can be quite confusing. Sorry about that. So yeah, we want to focus on the ones that we're trying to develop right now. But if it's in your wheelhouse, if it's in your karmic fate, 
to be a teacher and develop in a place that you want to go in Russia, Ukraine, whatever, Seattle area, uh, Mexico, then definitely. Now, personally, if you're thinking of the States, now that we have the East Coast covered, I would do the West Coast. I would do uh, Washington State or even Mexico because everybody loves to go to Mexico and it's cheap and it's really great. It's cheaper. You can set up cheaper there and better. Just got to wash your water supply. I think that's the main thing in Mexico, cartels and water supply. Okay. Good question. Gia, I'm wondering when do you anticipate the main center to be open and when where certain retreats might be most? Okay. The second part's too too much for now. Keep checking the uh, calendar and you'll see. Main center to be open. I said that's pending on the funding that we're going to get or not get. So we can't actually say. If we get the funding we're looking for right now, talking to funders, within two years, it would be open for business without a doubt. There'd be enough funds there, enough business generated, and we would get top-notch construction companies in, including probably Japanese carpenters. We'd get a whole bunch of them to come over and make extremely exquisite temples because this is what I want, you know, to have the Vastu reflect what we want. We don't really want to have metal. We want to do them traditional, uh, wooden stone. So that would be two years if we get the funding. And if we don't get the funding, five years probably, to be quite honest, because then it's my and my partner in this endeavor, who's a very old heart student of mine, who shall remain nameless and anonymous as he likes it. Uh, we're, you know, he doesn't want to pat on the back. He's that kind of guy. He just wants to make it happen. He's dedicated his life and his earnings to the centers. So uh, we just have to do our own work and generate money and build them. And that'll take about five years to build that center probably. Okay. So now you got that timeline. Shivanandani, when will Way of Fire training happen again? That's something we were just talking about and a year long one. That's probably going to depend on the students. Yeah. <laughs> so I just says it's her question too. Okay. So my answer would be yes, I'm still young enough to teach Way of Fire, all the levels of it. But I would like to see, I would like to see a group of people who are going to be Acharyas in their mind, they want to be Acharyas or their heart students. I'd like to see them commit to putting on like a one-year training, nine-month training, even if it's nine months and we did um, two modulars, level one, level two review, like for two weeks or something, they came back for nine months, you could probably pull it off. But I'd like to see them commit to doing it at a center where I am, not where I have to fly to, for the first time, for the first maybe one or two times. I'd like to see them doing it here and living around here and doing it here. And then I'm still able to be part of it to help guide those students in teaching it, which would be really wonderful. Um, and then, you know, that's how, that's how becoming an Acharya has, it's, it's developed, it develops this way anyway. As, an, as a junior Acharya or a person wanting to be in the Acharya program, you are going to be teaching. And you're going to be, first you're going to be attending each one of the cycles of teachings, minimum three times. I'd recommend a lot more than three, but minimum three and in your book signed off and then you're going to you're going to help assist the teachings a few times and then you're going to co-teach the teaching with me a few times and then you're going to take over the teaching and I'm going to be there supporting you and then you're going to be on your own that's traditional always that's how heart defoe my astrology teacher did it that's how everybody i know was trained that's how it works because that's the best way to get the quality okay so when will way of fire happen again like we said yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so early in 2024, before the three, six, adding total together, nine month way of meditation gets going, we we're hoping to do another immersive way of fire. One month, two month, three month, we don't know how long, maybe modules, maybe, maybe level one for a month, maybe level two for three months total, taking in that first month, something like that. So that's kind of exactly where we were thinking, and we want to see, or Shivanami, sorry, and we want to see who is, um, who really wants to come, you know, to help teach that, to help not to help teach it, to like, yeah, support me in teaching it. I probably would take the upper hand in it, but over that time, if it looked like people were really capable, I'd start handing it off and see if we could do a little more co-teaching kind of thing. And you take Friday, I'll take Monday, and I'll be do a question and answer on Tuesday, this kind of thing. And I would drop in and out on your teaching sessions to see how it's going. 
to give you notes on how to improve and things like that. So anyway, um, so your question is, when will we have fire happen again? Will it be a one year? Okay. So um, a kind of intensive one in the beginning of way of meditation for one to three months, something in that range. Well, whoever, and then, and then probably the year after would be the next shot for doing a long one. If, if, if people wanted to commit to teaching it, because they still would have to do it here. I still don't have enough time to go overseas for nine to 12 months, right? Or to Maine. So it would still have to be here at this center. So those teachers would have to say, yes, I want to, teachers in training, the charges in training. Yes, I, I where fire is going to be my thing. I want to help you teach it there for a long retreat again and take, you know, the bulk of the teaching responsibility, 60, 70%, and you only have to do 20, 30, whatever, 80, 80, 70%, you only have to do 20, 30. Um, yeah, and that those people would have to come forward so if those people didn't come forward, then it would have to be put off for another year until that kind of people came forward. Okay. And right now, the people who are able to do that are only the people who made it through this one year training in way of fire and who I have the confidence in that could actually teach it. Because not everybody who makes it through is going to be a teacher. Not everybody who makes it through who's going to be a teacher really got to a high level of attainment by the end of it. They may need more time still more time to understand it. That's okay. So all those factors. Okay. All right. All right. My friend who runs a surf school, by the way, is waiting for your father to come so he can surf with him. I told him about your dad's surf history. So that's a lot of fun. I just sent you his contact, actually, my friend Dylan. All right. He's a real estate man who owns a surf school. His heart's in surfing, born and raised in Hawaii. Sometimes I wonder who is this? Anuloma. Sometimes I wonder if it's too pretentious to want to be an Acharya without stable realizations of one's nature, just because it's hard to truly know where that decision is coming from. Let me start right there for a second. Maybe we haven't recognized our nature, but maybe we have recognized our own self-center deep enough to feel the difference between my ego desires I like the position of being a lineage master, or I think I'll get all access to all the secret teachings if I just sign on to be a teacher. I don't really want to be a teacher and have responsibility for everybody, but I get to sign on and get all the secret teachings. That was me. <laughs> and then I changed my mind when my heart opened. Um, you know, so yeah, I think we we often have the capacity to touch in and know our true heart. But knowing the true heart of wanting to be in your heart level to be an Acharya, then it has to come to, do I have what it takes to follow through? Or am I kind of a dilettante in English, French word we borrowed, right? Guya dilettante. Do I just kind of fool around on the surface a bit? Or can I really do it? That's a question. And we all have to study deep inside to know that. It's not necessary to have realization of the nature, stable realization of my nature, of your nature. That's going to happen down the road. I would think... Anybody who's training in the, you know, Acharya training program is going to probably start somewhere in stage five, high stage four in stage five, not stage seven or eight, but please, if you realized your nature and stabilized it, and you want to Acharya, Acharya train, please come on in for sure. It's a, it's a bonus, but I don't think much of that ever happens, to be honest. It's in the process we figure it out or we leave, you know. My personal desire to achieve is to achieve stability. And grounded on that space, make that decision. Yeah, so you can do that. That's a valid approach if you don't feel you know your true motives yet. But there's a possibility that by then it might be too late. Is there a way to check with you if that's the right path or if, or is that something you just have to feel and know? Yeah, you got to know for yourself. And what is too late for everybody is something different as well. So that's up to you. Look, I'm, I'm leaving this really trying to find these acharyas in a really powerful way right now. Is it too late? We'll find out. PM, RK, one, two, one, nine, two. Got to be an Asian person. Got to be Gia. Is that Gia? Yeah. Dharma, you have a center in Italy near the French border. Okay. Soon to come, that center. We're now looking for land. Right, Vajra? We're now in the land hunting phase. It's going to be pretty easy. There's a lot of stuff for sale, I think. Fairly easy. Yeah. It matters about funding, right? Funding makes everything easy. <laughs> 
So, you know, if it's easy to find one for 500,000, but all you have is 200, then it's not easy. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. Hungsara, for anyone from our Way of Fire cohort who feels inspired to discuss this possibility, what is what are you describing there? How do you know what he's saying? He doesn't even say. Oh, it's teaching the... Yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Um, actually, it's nice that you put that out, but like, I'm going to choose. Uh, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to hurt people's feelings that you include them in this group and they say, why aren't we teaching it? You know, so let's, let's uh, see. Why don't everybody who has a desire to teach this way of fire thing, who knows they're heading down the road of it being an instructor in way of fire or into the Acharya and training program, send a letter to uh, Sajidakini at trikapath at gmail.com. And then let's call from that group, the ones I think who could do it right away, the ones who I think need to work on this or that, which I would send to you to say, go work on this or that. And then you, because you got time between now and then to, to kind of pick your game up if you need to pick your game up, you know, blah, 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 blah. So that's a good idea. Let's do it that way. Okay, Hong Shui. Um, Is that it? We're good. Any live questions? People want to be heard, want to be seen, want to be heard. Any questions from the, yeah, and any questions from the hard students who are not going to be Acharyas in training, people who consider themselves going down that track of being a hard student. And I'll talk about that until you get the gumption to ask a question. So what is a hard student? A hard student is a hard thing to define, actually. I'll give you the example from um, my Dzogchen tradition. So in my Dzogchen tradition, when I first started training with holiness, very early in my training, he recognized that I had a karmic connection to someone named Tashi Shadza Jeltsin Rinpoche, His Holiness Tashi Shadza Jeltsin Rinpoche, who rainbow bodied in 1935 and left behind a plethora of amazing textbooks, the how-to collection of how to do full realization through, through Dzogchen. And Holiness was a wonderful, gracious teacher and gifted me his own copy of Shardza's main text, the Kusum Rangshar, with all his notes and notes in the side and the color markings and stuff, which was quite unusual because lamas are, are taught not to mark inside of a text and he just marked it up like crazy. I never forget when he gifted it to me and I opened it up and looked inside, I was just you know full of tears. I said, but holiness, you've written all over it. Like I was just in shock. I shouldn't even have said that, but he said, of course I did. How else can you take notes on a text? You have to have it right there. You have to see it. Oh, this idea, no writing on the text. This is stupid, old idea, no good. You know, and I was like, okay, you're my kind of dude. So, you know, um, in that lineage, he's very connected to it. He received all these transmissions in that lineage and he encouraged me to go down that road. So Shardza, before he rainbow body in 1935, he had four students who were, you know, all recognized as Acharyas before he died. But they were super humble and stayed with him till the moment that he rainbow bodied and really didn't teach much. They didn't like take personal students and start initiating them. And um, he had four of them. So they were called his four heart sons because they were all male. So back then, you know, if you're leading a, a monastery, that kind of thing, usually you had to only teach the men if you're a man or a woman going to teach the women. Occasional people like Longchempa, who left his monastery and was a Dzogchen teacher who went on his own, he had a mandala of dakinis, three or four powerful dakinis around him, five at times, and male viras to guard that mandala. The male students are called dakas or viras. And, uh, you know, he was unusual in this way at that time, but he had left mo a monastery and stuff. Anyway, this is why Shardza had four heart students. He had four heart students. And uh, these students were said to have received the deepest transmission, the deepest pith. This is what defines a heart student. They grafted. I don't know what you would call this in different languages, but if I have a mango tree, you know, and I want to get mangoes and plums, I'll cut a little little wedge into the side of the mango tree as it's growing up, and I'll splice in a little plum branch, tie it on, and give it medicine. And that mango will adopt that plum, and it'll grow up together, and that mango tree will grow plums and mangoes. This is we call grafting, where that plum became part of the mango world. So these heart students of Shardza's were grafted with him through sheer and utter devotions, through recognizing him as, and in his case, it was easy to do, 
uh, because he was such a Buddha, recognizing him as the Buddha of all times and spaces. So uh, what I'm looking for in that sense for the heart student is that's really what it is. It doesn't matter if they want to be a teacher or not. It matters that there's that all in kind of approach and that with that all in approach, there's proximity. The heart teacher is not, not really considered to be heart teacher when you live 3000 miles away and you see him once a year for a week retreat. It, you can, but it's not the same because there is a, uh, there's more than just the connection. With heart teacher, there's a functionality. And that functionality, and this is why it's subtle, that functionality has to do with invocation of the mandala, the descent of the tantric mandala. And this works even in the non-dual direct realization teachings. Remember in the traditional tantra, everyone gathers in the mandala, the guru and the consort in the center, and then the consort pairs around the outside of tantra, and they do the ritual, and they invoke the deity, and then they bring the deity down. It's said to come down from the heavens, right? We just use this terminology. Of course, it's not down. There's no directions in the ultimate essence. But we use that for a focus point. And the deity's mandala descends, and we get signs. Crows come, ravens come, snakes come, whatever, that there, this happened. And that's the ancient way. Well, heart students and committed acharyas in training, junior acharyas and acharyas, and consort make, and their consorts make the mandala. They make the reality. They make the reality of this other world. This this cheeky bugger who writes into Chikramasa Yoga all the time. We support him a lot, but yet he's a cheeky bugger. Uh, I wrote something. Um, Wagner's on here, so, so Wagner sent a beautiful set of photos of a master who rainbow body in our tradition recently achieved the the lesser rainbow body where your body just shrinks. And um, someone wrote in, nice nice fairy tales. Somebody wrote in a comment, nice fairy tales. Like it's, it's, a, it's a dig. It's a way of being, you know, a bit nasty. Like it's not real. Like Christopher Wallace thinks rainbow bodies aren't real as well. And I, I, I you know, so I wrote back to the guy. I said, yeah, I love living in my fantasy world, you know, because yeah, it's real for me. It's, it's real. And it's never going to be real for that person. And it's never going to be real for anybody who's even close to that. The mandala is only real for those people who have the utmost devotion. And utmost is, devotion is the most essential key to achieve realization. And let me go back to Shardza for an example of why this is true and how heart students form that mandala along with the junior charas, acharyas, and charas in training and why proximity is important. When Shardza rainbow body and went by, Everybody sort of looked at these for heart students now for the most of the teachings and some of the females that were in the nunnery because Shardza had his retreat hut right next to the nunnery and he gave them teachings, which was kind of Dzogchen teachings was kind of like not a thing done in those days. So they were actually quite high practitioners. So in fact, he gifted all the land to them when he died. <laughs> so everybody was looking at the four heart sons though as the male face of the school now who who's going to take over everyone wrote off one of the three heart sons you know why wagner do you know why because he was drunk all the time he was drinking something called chan which is like fermented milk sheep milk and he was kind of wasted all the time uh and they thought we don't need, he can't even clean his robes right like and he's like sleeping it off till 10 11 a.m you know we don't even see him do practice. When he does, he's like slurring his words and he falls over. What do you, who do you think was the first to achieve total realization from the heart sons, get a rainbow body? It was him, the drunk. I say drunk with all reverence because you can't pick it like that, but that's the mandala. That's the mandala. Somebody else can be perfect in their academic knowledge, be a Sanskrit scholar, Shiva philosophy scholar, read all the books, blah, blah, blah. Zero devotion, don't even know what that is, don't even have a real guru, never did real training, forget it. There's no realization there. So it's all about devotion, 100%. That's really what makes the heart student, but the functionality. So the prerequisite is pure motive and 100% devotion. The functionality is living in proximity of the mukhyacharya, the heart teacher, so that the mandala is invoked, evoked, invoked brought down, lived in. Our perceptual world here 
is pixels of color generated by our five elements through our nature naturally arising with no effort. If we don't have that view, we're not in the practice. This mandala here is for everybody who has that view and wants to hold it 24 seven and wants all the practices to realize it. That's how we prepare for death in the right way, actually. So you're out there on your own, you're out there on your own. So heart students, this is what that's about. You know, I give you credit if you're out there on your own, it's tough living your mandala, walking around with your mandala inside of everyone else's crazy mandala. It's harder. It can be done, of course, but it's harder. Okay, so that was a long answer to a short question. Uh, Maria? Hello, Spanda. For heart students, is there the same requirement around living nearby for six months? Oh, there you go. So that's the answer. And you do whatever you can. You know, when you get elected governor, they're not going to let you live here. You'll be in Sacramento. So is it different, Maria? Okay, different, uh, Maria. It's me. Oh, yeah. No, no it's <laughs> Maria. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, you do what you can. I know your life's busy. You just got married and everything too, right? Yeah, Mazel Tov. So, you know, take some time. But um, yeah, do what you can do. Do what you can do. Maybe uh, Washington State, you and Petra. Maybe Mexico. I'll spend time in Mexico, believe me. My wife is 33% Native American Mexican. We want to do an eating tour of Mexico. and We'd love to have a center there for many reasons. My heart is in Mexico. My blood, my knees are in Mexico. I had them worked on there with the uh, stem cell surgery. Anyway, whatever you can make it work, darling. Okay. Thanks. It has to be in your fate and your ability. Let's try. Let's try. I disagree with Harish when he puts down Kunli Hatha Yoga by saying it is not tantric. Does he say that now? That's so funny. Because there's a paper by Abhinava Gupta and showing his attitude towards Kundalini Hatha Yoga. And it's quite nasty, you know, it's quite nasty. It's just so un unnecessary. You know, here's, let me just tell you from the tradition why that approach is incorrect by Abhinava Gupta himself and by Chris. Now, Abhinava Gupta, who knows why he said the things he said, I really don't know. He was realized, so who knows. But when Abhinava Gupta opens up Tantra Loka in his opening verses, who does he loud? Who does he praise? Who does he say this all depends on? Anybody? Machandranatha. Machandranatha. He says, oh, my father, the first guru, blah, blah, blah. But then a few verses later, he says, none of this is possible without the great forefather of Tantra. Started all our Tantra, gave us all our Tantra, Machandranatha. And what was Machandranatha famous for? Hatha Yoga, Kumi Hatha Yoga. Of course, he's famous for Kaula Tantra, doing rituals to invoke deities in a non-dual fashion to achieve complete realization, rainbow body. And he's the first Mahasiddha. Oh, interesting. First Mahasuddha. Also the father of Kalini Hatha Yoga. Oh, interesting. So for either of those people to say that, you know, is silly, saying it's not tantric. That's a joke. The body entry path has taken a beaten, a beaten, a real heavy beating over the past thousand years. People don't think you can get there as a warrior. Don't forget, the greatest swordsman in Japan went right before he died. Earthquakes, changes in temperature, flowers blooming on trees. The guy had a small rainbow body. You know, don't forget, you can get it with warriorship. You definitely can get it through yoga. There's no question because yoga has all the high level meditation practices of non-dual direct realization from the way of meditation as well. Way of fire and way of meditation are like this at the top level. Can you see my fingers? They crisscross. I got to go back to the other screen. I don't know if you can see me. Can you? Yeah, they crisscross like this. At the very top, you're going to be doing the exact same practices. Why? Everybody knows who did the one year training. The ultimate postures of Kundalini Hatha Yoga are the seated, the four seated meditation postures mentioned at the beginning of Hatha Yoga Pratipika. Those are the ultimate yoga postures. You do all the other postures so that you'll be free enough in your channels, chakras, and bindus to be able to sit in those postures, the first four, and be able to be in direct realization. But with the impediments of the channel chakra, not possible. But when it's possible, and you've done your Mahakumbhaka and you're burned up everything inside, at the end, of course, there's nothing left but the higher levels of meditation for every path, basically. For the mirror consorts, that's true. <clears throat> for daily yoga, for way of water. So it's kind of true for everything in the end. All right, so that's a silly view. We won't, don't, don't quote Harish to me much. It's no use wasting time on people who don't know tradition or haven't had it, just read books. 
Sounds like harsh question, but what is the utility of academic knowledge and the study of text if all this data from Manas will disappear? Yeah, this question is nice, but it's more like for Yogi Yogi tomorrow, right? Yeah. Can you do that one tomorrow? We want to stay right on the teaching centers, the forecast for the nine, 10 years. Because, you know, I can go on a tangent for a half hour. No one has the time. Any last questions? Get them in there. It looks like we're good. No new movement on the chat boxes. No hands coming up in the windows. They're fenced. Or... No, 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 no. Okay. Hit it, Eves. Hey, Dama. I was. Bon dia. Well, good morning. <laughs> bon dia. I was wondering if astrology can help to understand if being an acharya or not is in my way, or self reflection should be like the, the, the key, or, or both. 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 Absolutely both. And uh, Sachidakini can be a real aid to help you look at how many configurations of planets and other things that you can find in chart, myriads of things that make you predisposed to being a very good teacher, the teacher pro forma. But it doesn't necessarily limit a person if you don't have a lot of those components. What it does mean is that you'll have a skill set that is very good standard skill set for being able to reach people with information. It doesn't say a lot about your ability to transmit the experience of one's nature. That's more the mystical cuckoo stuff you read in the chart. So we could read a chart for both. Like if you look at my chart, I've got, what would you say? Yeah, I've got more of the mystical stuff, you know, like Hart Defoe said, yeah, you're going to teach for sure. There's no way around it. The Acharya, blah, 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 blah. But it's going to be kind of wacky because I don't have a lot of that standard curriculum you would think of. Like if you go to college to learn how to be a teacher, they're going to teach you how to teach. My teachers taught me how to transmit. You know, it's really different. And then I had guru training. Like I said, I'd sit there and listen. They would talk about, oh, you remember when this person asked this today and I answered that? That's all there for sure. I had that kind of training. But if you went through a different kind of training, if you had a different kind of <clears throat> background than I do, which is more purely mystical, then I hate that word mystical, but you know what I mean? Not academic oriented towards teaching. Although I do love pedagogy as a science. Then you would, you would go through, like, let's say I was in a monastery. Tibetan Buddhist monastery, Bumpo monastery, you're going to go through, this is how you should teach. This is the progression that the text should go in. This is the way you should run your debates. This is how you should do your tests, your exams, blah, 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 blah. Because it's a school. It's literally a school. When you see people coming out with Geshe degrees, I don't know, when I see students fawning all over Tibetans because they have a Geshe degree and instantly calling them Rinpoche, first of all, that is really wrong to do. Just calling somebody Rinpoche right away, just because you're told that it means an honor, it's an honorific, that it's really nice to say to teachers. And if, if that was true, we should all do it. But it's not true. The true, true, true understanding of Rinpoche is that you've achieved a certain level of attainment and your senior has acknowledged it and has called you home to the temple and given you a big ceremony where you're actually called a Rinpoche in the ceremony. And then you're put back out there to teach. So when you get out with a Geshe degree, a Kempo degree, these are just somewhere between eight and 12 years of academic study. And it says nothing about your attainment. And it's not that it's not a great attainment. It is, but it's academic. So I don't know, maybe there's some spiritual reverence necessary to those people, but normal bow would be enough. You don't have to be like thinking they're fully realized and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so when they come out and they start teaching in their schools, people get a really ac good academic sense of what's going on and everything. But I'm not so sure the transmission value is very high, having been closely associated with a monastery and watching the practitioners in the monastery. I can tell you firsthand that I know many of them that are out teaching the world today. And when they were students in the monastery, their main concern was what's going on in their WhatsApp and Facebook and how much money they had in their accounts so they could buy some extra candy at the store that day. It wasn't on mat practicing, let me tell you. Us foreigners who were chasing the Dharma would go and practice our balls off in that place, looking for anybody who really wanted to practice really deep like that and end up making friends with the other foreigners, the Russians and the other ones who were really intense. And then we'd all practice together going, all right, I guess it's not here in the monks. And we would go for the Rinpoche, the, the masters that were there, like His Holiness and Lopan and Punlop. And you see, 
Okay. Did I answer what you're asking? Yeah. That was the, which one was that? All right. Anyway, Chief Nanini, what do you plan to do in Brazil in the next years? <clears throat> I don't know. What do you plan? So, yeah, uh, I will always go where sincere heart students are who are developing centers. To have a center developed and call it a Trika Mahasiddha Yoga Center with a student who's not a heart student is not really that good, you know? And then we say, but the heart students have to be with us. Yeah, so you have to split your time between the two and let somebody else run it in between if you want to really run it and be a heart student, right? That's, that's what you have to have developed at that point. Um, maybe the other acharyas in training can cycle through and lead trainings while you're back with the main teacher. This is why we have to be a well-knit family and communicate well, be harmonious and really want to help each other. What are my plans for Brazil? Obviously, I have karma with Brazil, lots of Brazilian students. I love Brazil and it drives me crazy at the same time. So because the Dharma culture is so hard to establish there, uh, simply because the basis of understanding emotional mental clarity is um, very difficult, I think for the culture, it's in the culture. So we have to overcome cultural bias and then we get into the real teachings. But having said that, you know, I like the country, I like the people and I feel uh, like I'd like to give to them. So what would I like to do in the next years? I'd like to lead trainings there for sure, but I don't want to do any more, um, what do you call it? I don't know a term for it. My experience with Brazil is that I would go down, I would teach and Brazilians are preloaded through their conditioning to look for magic, to look for magicians, to look for wizards, to look for gurus they can worship and think somehow by association with that guru, they're gonna, everything good is gonna happen instead of really doing the hard, hard work of spiritual development and ego effacement, self-effacement. I just don't think they have it in general. The idea that you're gonna be ruthless with yourself. Intellectually, many of my students in Brazil, I wouldn't even call them my students, but many people I teach in Brazil, they understand what I'm saying. You have to get your ego out of the way. You have to stop self-referencing. You have to stop being emotionally reactive. But they don't do it. They've been coming to trainings for years, but they don't do it. They still react, still gossip, still backbite. You know, and this is a, a cultural thing. And I'm I'm headed to Italy. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same in Italy. I don't know. Roger Dockery is still here. I don't know what she's what she would say about that, but I think I asked her that when I was down there. Uh, yeah, it comes up. Yeah, it's going to be the same in Italy. So I expect that because my family was like that. They were Italian and they were crazy. You know, I feel right at home in Brazil because in one way, it's like uh, my Italian crazy family. So anyway, yeah, what do I want to do in Brazil? I want to teach real students who really want to change and really want to grow. I met some on that last trip. It's 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 feels stronger. Um, I don't have enough years to wait around 20 years till someone grows up and decides he really wants a dharma, you know. So yeah, if that's happening, I'm there. There's no question. I don't care if there's three people or five people. The thing is, if I don't have, it's real simple, folks. I got two types of dharma possible, as in dharma bodhi. One type is my business is going well. I got a few money because I got the funding and I can fund myself and I don't depend on your donations, right? And that's what I want. And then I can teach whatever I want, whenever I want and fly anywhere I want. And I can take care of my body in business class. You know, guys don't have to moan and complain about paying to take care of me. But there's that Dharma. And there's the broke Dharma, the broke ass Dharma, which, which we have right now as we get low in the bank account. Um, and that one can't do whatever I want. In that case, I need to be taken care of if I come down. As long as I'm taken care of, I don't care how many people are there. So in the old days, we had sponsors in each location and rich sponsors who lived in France or Italy or Brazil or America or Mexico, whatever. They would say, uh, Guruji, I really want to give this, listen to my wording. Guruji, I really want to give this teaching to benefit the people here. I really want you to give this teaching on whatever. So I went to, you know, many of these given by traditional Asian people, Indians and Tibetans and Nepali. I went to many of these and I benefited from free trainings. Free trainings held for hundreds of people in tents out in the woods in India and so forth. Uh, somewhere even in America. And it was amazing because the sponsors were doing what sponsors should do. Wealthy people should spend their money for the Dharma. And then the teacher was all taken care of and nobody had to worry about anything. Students could come no matter what their level of income or wealth. Anyway, so there's that potential too. There's the one where I have a few money and I just go and teach anyway and everyone just takes advantage of it. And that's okay. There's ones where the students gather in a place and they go, let's get Guruji here. 
We know we got to take care of them. It's going to cost us a lot, but at least we know we'll have the teaching. And if no one else comes but us five people, then we five people, then we get the benefit. Great. Then there's the other kind where a wealthy patron's uh, sponsor do their pure motivation and wish to help other beings in the area and just put it out for free to everybody come. And those, those events are special. I don't know. There's something so special about that when you're not trying to, maybe, maybe some of the Asian sponsors were trying to gain merit, whatever, but that's okay. They get merit from it anyway. So anyway, what's possible in Brazil in the next two years? Was it wait? No, no. What do you do with the next years? Yeah, that's it. If you want to keep developing our chakra, Shivanandini, your center, and if we can find a rural center, I don't know if your dad's is suitable for the Rushen or not. You were talking about Rushen recently. I don't know if he's suitable or not. But And Rushen is something that everybody needs to recognize their nature, I think. I think it's one of those essentials. I did three of those trainings. I mean, they're indispensable. I think everybody needs it. Um, anyway, yeah, let's see what happens down there. Let's see what kind of support you get. Let's see what kind of thing can be stabilized. Let's see what you can stabilize and so on. Okay, let's see what's happening. We'll see. Let's see if I, which one of the three Dharma Bodhis shows up based on my financial ability. Okay, Wagner. Will it be possible to teach way of water level two in Brazil next years? Anything's possible, like I said. So based on all that financial stuff and how free I am, I was going to bring my son down to teach the next time in Brazil and simultaneously run a way of the warrior and let him teach one of the two classes with me each day. Like we would do early morning and after at nighttime, that kind of thing, and do the, the other kind of five, the other four ways of Dharma in the daytime. And he's keen to help with that. He wants to learn it himself. He's keen to help with it. So, you know, we'll work these things in there. Okay. Way of water level two down in, you mean, uh, you mean uh, Dasha Mahavidya and Kriya Yoga, that, not Puja level two. Okay. Uh, it's possible. It's a lot of work, but you know, if there's a lot of people that had gone through the basics that are ready, they got to have the prelims, they got to have the foundations, right? But they'll be coming up with uh, on the schedule in the future. What is your opinion on the building a center in a Muslim country with modern, with moderate Islam, such as Morocco? Man, Morocco is not so uh, moderate though, is it? PMRK12192. Okay, so you're not Asian. I, I missed it. So you picked up that Asian thing. Um, what is my opinion on that? I'm not anti any religion. I'm anti those religions that can affect a government. Especially those religions that can affect a government, adopt that religious law as the government law. And gay people are going to be thrown from minarets, bundled up in ropes. And you know, that, that shit is medieval and got to go period from the planet period expunged from the sacred scriptures that stuff just doesn't work so look i have a personal desire that i'm i don't know if i'm ever going to be able to fulfill i want to go to tunisia i want to go to algiers they attract me very strongly the coastline there i i want to see this stuff i want to go to you know the sudan and see the beautiful ancient egyptian culture that was taken up there after the earlier egyptian culture i want to go to morocco i went to spain last year and we were trying to go after the retreat, but we just couldn't swing it financially. I do want to go to Morocco. I just don't know. Uh, I wouldn't build one there, but if a student wanted to do it, that's cool. That's cool. That's all on them. If they wanted to go through the training and take the risk of being burnt at the stake for being some kind of infidel, uh, okay, that's their karma. Would I come and teach there? In a moderate time, I would come and teach there and feel pretty safe. If there was any any type of bad stuff going on, like where Coptic Christians I saw in Egypt are getting like hassled like crazy, burning down their churches and homes, and you know they're all fleeing for their lives in the past ten years, nah, then I wouldn't go. I don't feel safe there to do it that way. But I would train the student who wanted to go there and do it if they wanted to. Yeah, that's my answer. You know, I have nothing against people. I love people. I don't like when radical religious ideas get in control of governments and law. And then it's not going to happen, right? For me, anyway. Love to visit you in Morocco anyway, though, when we go. Rushan, yeah, you can find out about that later. All good. Okay. Looks like we're done. Looks like we did it. 
Oh, it was a longer than I thought it was going to be, but uh, really great questions. And you made a lot of things come to light that we hadn't considered, you know, that were going to come out. So that's very good. It's a good information piece. Um, anything else in closing? Tomorrow's Yogi to Yogi, be there or be square. It's the last Yogi to Yogi before I go into a format where I start doing topical talks instead of Yogi to Yogi where it's all open. I'm going to cover a series of topics that I think are important for view training and maybe make a composite video style view training out of these talks. We're going to structure them. I'll rate them ahead of time and so on. But then the question and answers can even help fill it out, which is even better. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you all for attending uh, and for helping to build the school, preserve the tradition, help beings keep it going for the benefit of everybody. So I thank you very much. And I hope the Mahasiddhas continue to bless. I pray that they continue to bless us in the work of discovering our true nature, stabilizing it for the benefit of all beings. May all beings be released from confused suffering. Emaho, may it be so. Tatastu, Shivoham, everybody. Be good, do good, serve, meditate, realize, as Swami Shivananda would say, and Sarvamangalam. <laughs>